Today, we're blessed to have a friend of beat diabetes all the way from Pakistan. His name is Akhtar Buddha, and his story of victory over diabetes is one that transcends nationality and culture and gets to the heart of what it will take for you to see victory in your life over diabetes. I'm going to do this interview a little differently from how I normally do these interviews. I'm going to break into the interview from time to time and highlight some very important things we can learn. Right now, let's go to the land of Pakistan and hear from our friend, Akhtar. The story begins in 2016 when I was uh, 29 years of age. I went to the doctor for regular flu checkup. I was having fever and all those symptoms, simple symptoms we have. I went to the doctor and the doctor checked the blood pressure and it was like 160 systolic and 90 diastolic. So it was high. So I had no idea about that, the blood pressure. So the doctor gave me the medication, checked for the random blood sugar. It was 140. He said the blood sugar is okay, thank God. But uh, your numbers for blood pressures are up. So he suggested uh, some tests for cholesterol and other uh, tests. The, the cholesterol was also high. He gave me, put me on cholesterol medication and then blood pressure medication and uh, just um, uh, advised me to take walk and go for exercise. So I did the same. And um, the blood pressure was low. And after a few months, the cholesterol was also low. So then in 2018, after two years, I went to the doctor for a regular checkup. And uh, he suggested, because it's like two years now on, and you were on the medication, let's repeat all the tests again. So... When we check the, this time he, instead of random sugar, he advised for A1C. The A1C was 7.5 that time. Cholesterol was in 300s. HDL was low as 30. LDL was high as 150. I had uric acid of 7.5 and vitamin D level was also low. So, the doctor told me, you are a pre-diabetic. So in our country, if we are below 8.5 A1C, they consider it as pre-diabetic. Now, this is something I did not know and that totally shocked me. Doctors in Pakistan tell patients their A1C must be as high as 8.5 or higher in order to be fully diabetic. I don't know of anywhere else that has such a standard. An A1C of 8.5 equals an average glucose level of 197 milligrams per deciliter, which is incredibly high. And to me, it's crazy to think you've got to be that high before becoming labeled a diabetic in Pakistan, unless there are some factors I just simply don't know about, such as a different type of A1C measurement than from all the rest of the world. An A1C score represents what percentage of hemoglobin proteins in your blood are coated with sugar or glycated. As far as I know, this is the same the world over. And yet Pakistani doctors are saying you have to have an A1C of 8.5 or higher to be diabetic. Therefore, when Akhtar had an A1C of 7.5, the doctor told him he was pre-diabetic. I need to refrain from sugar and sweet things and sugary stuff. That's it. He gave me no idea of carbs and um, other things which will impact my blood sugar instead of sugar only. So I started uh, refraining from uh, sugary drinks, carbonated drinks, and sugar, refined sugar. That's it. So I was not taking care of what I am eating on my table. Um, uh, in terms of bread. So bread was the main issue, I guess. Now I know. But at that time, the doctor did not guide me about anything like carbs. Carbs, I got to know only six months back. Only. Now, this issue is not just a problem in Pakistan. This is a problem all over the world, including in the U.S. 
Many diabetics, nutritionists, and even doctors feel that the major thing a diabetic should do once he finds out he is diabetic, the major thing he should do to help himself is cool it on eating sugar. And uh, he will usually not be told or she will not be told a single thing about reducing carbohydrates in general. So just eat all the chips and pretzels and roti and naan and bagels that you want as long as you throw away your sugar bowl. Well, avoiding sugar is a start, but it's only a start. You're going to have to go far deeper than that to truly beat diabetes. But Akhtar did what he was told and began to avoid sugar. I know about the Indians. I've been to India a number of times, and I know that bread makes up a large part of their diet. Uh, Would that be true in Pakistan as well? Yeah, the same. And you know also the name of flat bread, which we consume, the roti. So you were eating that breakfast, lunch, and and dinner? Three times, and you can say 100 grams of uh, uh, wheat flour each time. Okay. So he told you to cut out the sheet, the the sweets, the sugar, but didn't say anything about starches, bread, uh, anything like that. And uh, no, what kind of progress did you make at that point? At that point, uh, for a few ma- uh, few months, I was uh, like uh, very careful about those stuff, sugary stuffs, and all those things. And uh, I was not on medication. He said pre-diabetic, so um, I. He said that I can control it now with the food and exercise. I started going to the gym and all those stuff. So then uh, two more years passed and uh, all the diabetic symptoms started appearing. The doctor went for the test. The test uh, report of A1C was 9.7. 9.7. Uh, fast 9.7 and the fasting was 350 so it was like full blown diabetic a fasting glucose of 350 milligrams per deciliter is absolutely terrible in 2 years while he avoided sugar and ate bread freely his diabetes deteriorated horribly did the doctor tell you that this was pretty serious did he give you any more advice about uh, what to eat no not exactly just the same story, the same sugars, the sweet things. The whole idea over here is we should avoid sweets. That's it. Okay, so you didn't you didn't know anything else to do. Now, at some point, you got involved in looking at YouTube videos, apparently. How did that happen? Yeah, I was having all the symptoms like pain in the legs, frequent urination, thirst. My eyesight was weak. I was losing weight. The doctor put me on metformin. And um, I just started taking the metformin. I was uh, more careful now in my eating habits and started uh, exercises as well. So, and uh, six months passed, uh, my all the symptoms were the same. The neuropathic symptoms, numbness, weak eyesight, everything was there. So I went on, I thought uh, the control is not efficient. So I went for A1C on my own to a private lab and uh, got the test and it was 5.3. So I was amazed. I was having all those symptoms and uh, my A1C was okay. Now, to me, this is one of the most fascinating parts of Akhtar's story. He had brought his A1C down into a very good range with the metformin and avoiding sugar and exercising, and he seemed to be doing pretty well. Yet he still had all the symptoms of full-blown diabetes. Why was this? Well, that's a question for people brighter than me to answer. But one simple point you can deduce is that things were still not right in his body. I went to the doctor. The doctor told me to to carry on with this. It's okay. 5.3 is okay. He gave me neuropathic uh, neuropathy tablets to heal the pain. So at that time, I went uh, to the YouTube and started searching for uh, the advices from uh, other than Pakistani doctors. So the the world, uh, how they are tackling the diabetes. So at that time, I uh, stumbled upon <laughs> your videos. Okay. So then I was a kind of addicted to it. 
I went through all the food experiments, and um, that time I got the idea that uh, the carbs are the biggest culprits. So, for um, uh, around uh, three months, I went a um, thousand milligram of uh, metformin to eight fifty. Then, after a few weeks, I went to. 500 milligrams, then 250 milligrams, and um, I was checking constantly blood glucose levels through the blood glucose monitors. So it was giving me encouraging results. So I started reducing the dosage which I was taking. Here are two important diabetes beating concepts. Akhtar says he was checking his blood sugar with a glucose meter constantly. And secondly, his meter was giving him encouraging results. He began to realize, as a result of checking with Mike, the Pakistani meter, that his program of reducing his total carbohydrates as well as doing away with sugar was making a huge difference in his health and his blood sugar. Akhtar reveals specifically how he learned to test his blood sugar after meals to determine how high his glucose was spiking. And then, uh, although I had a glucose meter before, I bought a new one, which is supposed to be more accurate, and uh, started checking um, blood glucose regularly before the food, after the food, just like you advise. Because mostly doctors say check uh, uh, two hours post prandial, which will not give us the idea of uh, blood sugar spike. If we spike and then. Um, our body produces uh, insulin, and it came down after two hours. We will not have the idea that how much the food contained uh, sugar or the carbohydrates. So when I knew the main culprit was carbohydrate, including sugar as well. Before I thought only sweet things can cause blood sugar spikes. So when I got this idea, I cut down all the carbs. And uh, moved to home baked uh, brown bread, having uh, coconut flour, flax seed. Uh, I researched the nutritional value of every stuff, all the grains, the vegetables, and incorporated this. I haven't tried intermittent fasting or time restricted eating till now because I am still skinny. I want to add more weight. But uh, I'm not uh, in between meals. I'm not eating anything. So I will have my breakfast early in the morning because I experience dawn phenomenon. So just to curb it down, I will have my breakfast at eight. Then I will go for exercise after having meal, just to cut down that spike. And it works very well. Even today, I was checking after having breakfast. My one hour and five minute uh, post uh, breakfast numbers were eighty four, which was quite good. Wonderful. Yeah. So, so let me uh, let me ask you: What is a normal breakfast for you these days? What do you What do you eat for your breakfast? Nowadays, I will have a piece of bread, consisting, as I told you, uh, bran raw bran, which I will go to the flour mill nearby. I will uh, get it from there. Then I will mix it with uh, coconut flour, flax like seed, uh, ground it. Then I will make a dough and uh, make a flat bread out of it. And I will take it with the vegetable curry uh, or chicken curry or something like this, just to make it eatable. Okay, so tell us a little bit more about your diet that uh, you that you're using these days. Uh, you have this flat bread as you've described. What other kinds of foods do you eat uh, frequently? So uh, I uh, take three meals. So as I told you, in the breakfast and dinner, the flat bread, and we can have some curries, vegetables, and uh, chicken, mutton, and uh, in uh, the lunch. I take a salad consisting uh, cucumber, tomatoes, Greek yogurt, which I will make uh, myself, uh, rinsing all the water from the curd, and then the Greek yogurt, homemade Greek yo yogurt I use in this uh, salad, a uh, salad dressing, and put some herbs 
like cinnamon and uh, black pepper which will uh, barely raise my blood sugar my blood sugar baseline is uh, around 90 so whenever i eat this salad it will go up to 110 15 and i if i go for 5 minute 10 minute exercise after that or walk then it will be barely touching 100 Folks, I think that is just fantastic. Akhtar is doing everything right, seems to me. Being from Pakistan, where they eat flatbread constantly, he found a way to make a flatbread that works for him, made up of raw bran, flaxseed, and coconut flour. He adds some curry stew over the bread and makes a perfectly acceptable meal. Yet, if one of his neighbors saw this, they wouldn't think too much about it. He is beating diabetes Pakistani style. and by checking with his glucose meter he knows this is working for him he shares his current blood pressure and a1c these days my blood pressure readings were 160 over 80 before and i was taking medication also for blood pressure now i am not taking any blood pressure meds and my blood pressure is 115 75 or 120 80 That's and, fantastic. Um, What about the A1C? A1C is 5.5 without meds. What an amazing story. Living in Pakistan, he cannot go to the market and find dozens and dozens of keto products the way we do in America. So instead, he makes use of foods that are available and his trusty glucose meter. And the knowledge of things he has learned from this channel has helped as well and now he's off his blood pressure meds and his diabetes meds and has an A1C below the American standards even for pre-diabetes. Well done, Octar. And the moral of this story is that you can beat diabetes wherever you live, in America or Africa, India or Pakistan. You may have to get a little creative, you may have to do some experimenting and find which foods spike your blood sugar terribly and which do not. But you can do it, my friend. With the help of God, you can do it.